Hello and welcome. You're watching us on yet another special episode of Mad About Markets, and this one's special not because of anything else, but the fact that it's the 75th independence anniversary of the country, and the Prime Minister did speak about making defence products in India. In India, indigenously, and yes. Indigenously, and immediately after that, we had the launch of our first indigenously built. Aircraft carrier INS, INS Vikram. Vikram, and what a proud moment that was for India. But you know that is not all. The Defence Ministry has released yet another list of items that should be procured from Indian companies instead of being imported. And as a result, defence companies in India have seen their share prices rally. That is on top of mind today. And hear it from the experts. Here's what they said. जिसको ये बात एक आवाज उसे नई प्रेरणा ताकत नहीं दी जब हमारा ब्रह्मोस दुनिया में जाता है कौन हिंदुस्तानी होगा जिसका मन आसमान को न छूता होगा Many common threats and the geopolitics uh, that surround us, uh, with uh, many common interests. So I do think that the trajectory of the defence relationship is going to go north. It's not going to be very long that we will see the first defence unicorn coming out of India. Our armoured vehicle uh, program, the Kalyani M4, where we have already started supplies, and we expect that that product will also become a mainstream product for the. Indian Defence Forces in various different uh, theatres and fields. Long distance missiles are going to be fired and uh, aircrafts are uh, playing a big role in this. India is, uh, I think, the third largest uh, defence budget, almost 3% of GDP, which is quite substantial uh, compared to the world. So, there's a, the beauty is, of course, that these stocks are available at what I believe are good valuations. Bharat Mata Ki! Jai! Bharat Mata Ki! Jai! Well, that's what they said, the big opportunity in India's defence space. But why just yeah. India? You know, last year was remarkable in the sense that the world's combined military expenditure actually crossed $2 trillion for the first time. Yeah. Understandably, USA and China were the with top the two. Well. Uh, yes, with the yeah. war as well. But, you know, it was US and China at the top and the third one, was India, the yeah. third significant spender in the world, was India at $77 billion. And here's the counterintuitive part. Despite the war in Russia, yeah. India was a higher defence spender than uh, United Kingdom and Russia itself. So that's the kind of expenditure that we do. Yeah. And why do we do that? Well, because we do have almost a lakh and a half armed personnel. We have nearly 2,200 aircraft, 4,600 tanks and 12,000 armoured vehicles. So that's India's combined armed forces strength, so to say, right now. But a lot of that is imported, right? Because we're also among the largest importers in the world when it comes to defence products. So between FI-17 and 20, 90 contracts worth 1.76 lakh crores were signed with foreign vendors alone. India accounts for 11% of the global arms sales currently. More than 40% of our defence equipment is actually imported. In the last 10 years, our defence expense has grown at a compounded annual growth rate of about 9%, whereas the capex, and here's the opportunity, has grown by only about 6%. Now, this indicates a shortfall in our defence capacity requirement, and that is exactly where the opportunity lies. Now, in the five-year period between 2017 and 2021, what we've seen is our defence imports decline by 21% versus the five years ago. And we've also seen a six times jump in the arms exports since 2014 at one and a half billion dollars as of FY22. Yes, things are changing and a large part of that is on account of the government's thrust that has come in on defence production and exports and that provides another tailwind to the industry. They have a target of $25 billion worth defence products being produced in the country versus about $10.8 billion by FY25 and as far as exports are concerned, which have already jumped around six times mm. to 11,600 crores, are expected to go all the way up to 36,000 
500 crores. Now, if you take a look at the share of indigenous products in the Indian Army or the Indian Armed Forces, it's the Indian Army which has the highest share at 82%. And we have Indian Navy which has 61% of their expenditure which is done indigenously. And as far as the Indian Air Force is concerned, here's where we are more dependent on imports still with only 47% of the CapEx requirement being met indigenously. And that gives you a sense of the opportunity. So on that note, uh, let's bring in our guests on the show. Jen Patel, the Senior Executive Vice President of Defence at LNT is with us. So is Commodore PR Hari, the Chairman and Managing Director of Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers. We also have Amit Mahajan, who's the Director of Business Development at Paris Defence and Space. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here. Mr. Patel, I'll begin with you. What is the kind of current revenue composition at LNT Defence? Tell us about that and how much is it from India versus abroad? In case of Las Cruz, it's about 4,000 crores uh, per year is what we do for uh, uh, in the defense sector. Government is obviously the lion's share of it. I must say about 90% is government. Private, there's virtually nothing because uh, you can't sell anything in defense to uh, anyone else other than government. And of course, about 10% is export. All right, 4,000 crore revenue with 10% uh, being exports and 90% to the government itself. Uh, Commander Hari, coming to you, what do you think is the size of the opportunity for indigenization, specifically for Indian Navy? Uh, see, as far as the potential is concerned, it is huge. Uh, with the government thrust on indigenization, with, uh, if you just see the budget for uh, FY23, 68% of the capital procurement has been earmarked for domestic industry. Now, both the Indian Navy, the biggest, uh, naturally the biggest customers, domestic customers are the Indian Navy and the Indian Coast Guard. Both these forces are aspiring to be, as per their perspective plans, aspiring to be 200 fleet strong by 2025 and 27 respectively. So the opportunities are galore. All right, so we've got a sense of the opportunity, but Amit, just take a step back and tell us, you know, what according to you has really changed for the industry in the last few years? Of course, now we're seeing this thrust on indigenization of products. Uh, this indigenization, uh, the drive that we're talking about, this is one of the biggest revolutions that has happened in the defense industry. Say five years back, uh, or for that matter, I would like to take you 10 years back. Uh, there used to be, if you are buying something domestic, then there were a multiple set of tests. You had to prove your quality and you had to prove uh, your suitability and you were always being compared to a foreign a foreign product or a foreign uh, uh, solution in that particular domain. Now today, what has changed over the period of uh, so many years is if you have to import, then you have to give multiple justifications. Now you can imagine the sea change that has happened in the procurement procedures. Today, the domestic supply is not just considered to be a cost-effective supply, but also a supply which will give them support over uh, and above the sales. So once you supply something for the defense forces, you are also there because of you being an Indian company, you will also be there standing with them to support those uh, systems. So the opportunities right from a uh, tank to the aircraft. The opportunities are on each and every platform. And the first uh, priority for procurement is given to a company which is indigenously designing, developing, and manufacturing those systems here in the country. Well, hang in there, gentlemen. Uh, you guys have been talking about indigenization. So let's talk about the government's thrust, increased thrust on indigenization itself. In the previous budget itself, 68% of the capital procurement has been budgeted for the domestic industry in the defense sector. And that's not all. As for the defense FDI policy in 2022, the FDI or foreign direct investment limit has been increased from 49% to 74% under the automatic route for items with 50% indigenous production. But that's not all. The big game changer happened between August 2020 and now. The multiple lists that the government released called positive indigenization list or negative negative import list periodically with 101 items, 108 items, May, and then it came on to December. And as recent as March as well as August 2022 itself, 
put together all these lists that have come in for line replacement units, subsystems, platforms for defense, etc. We've seen over 1500 items being included in these positive indigenization or negative import lists. And that's the kind of thrust that we've seen for domestic defense industry as a whole. Well, that's a whole long list of items that have been indigenized, and that is the opportunity that we're continuously talking about here. What we've also had is major achievements in this space. INS Vikrant, which uh, Manglam referred to earlier, was our first indigenously built aircraft carrier. INS Arihant is our first indigenous nuclear submarine. Tejas has been indigenously built. Uh, it's a combat aircraft by HAL. And we also have a whole host of indigenous missile development plants, like you have Akash, Prithvi, Nag, Trishul, Agni, among others. Now, among the listed players in the defense space, we understandably have a lot of public sector entities like HAL, you have your BEML, Mazgado, Cochin Shipyard, uh, you know, Bharat uh, Dyna Dynamics, and a whole host of others. And in the private space, you have the likes of Tata's, you have Mahindra's, you have Ashok Leyland. Uh, solar industries, power defense, and so on. So all of this participation by these players has been increasing, and their expenditure on defense, of course, also has been increasing. Let's pose that question on the revenue opportunity as well. Uh, to Mr. Patel, you know, how has the revenue for defense players in India changed in the last five years or so? Have you on the ground as well seen a big change? This sector opened about two decades back for private sector. Really speaking, the private sector involvement began just about 15 years back. But of that, I must say, last seven, eight years have been exceptional. Uh, it used to be one third that used to get bought within the country. Today, it's 68% to be precise. 92,500 crores per year is what Ministry of Defense spends on buying from Indian companies, and that's a large number. Uh, the private sector contribution out of it used to be just about seven, eight years back, less than 5%. Today, it has reached 25%. So that's a five-fold increase uh, within the last seven, eight years. And that's essentially where uh, lots of private sectors would do well. Going forward, these numbers are supposed to be increasing. The ballpark is about 15% CAGR going forward. We have seen that last three, four years, about 13 to 14%. Uh, capital improvement in terms of budget allocations has actually been done. 15% CAGR is the revenue projection in terms of growth. Comrade Hari, would you concur with that? What exactly is your revenue target over the next few years? You did about 1,100 crores in the previous financial year. Now, uh, since I, about the revenue, I, as you rightly said, I'm sitting on an order book of uh, 23,000 uh, crores. And uh, with the current execution plan, the order book will get uh, the, the order book will get uh, validated, I mean, uh, nullified by FI27. So uh, right now, uh, during FI22, my revenue from operations was uh, 1758 crores. And uh, this year, we expect uh, uh, definitely uh, the mid of the. Uh, 2,500 crores. And we are on an upward trajectory with FI25, I expect uh, somewhere ranging between 4,500 to 5,000 crores. Uh, so 23,000 crore order book in the pipeline. But Amit, let me bring uh, that, that point to you as well. Uh, what is the proportion of your products that are now eligible under this list that has been released uh, to be made in India versus what it was earlier? Actually, 100% of what we are doing is relevant to the positive indigenization list because over the legacy of four decades of our company we have been striving for import substitution we have been a pillar or a nucleus of import substitution all the time today we get that uh, psychology a momentum by positive indigenization list almost all the platforms all the components mentioned therein we will i have either pinned to aeroplane uh, contribution to that. I, we are very, very proud to mention that there are some systems which are into that list because we have developed those systems and we, after development, also are the only company in India to do those systems. So this is, again, a very, very positive and a very moment of pride for a company like Paras. Take that point, Amit. Uh, you cater to a various, uh, uh, you know, repertoire of the Indian defense requirements, but what segment do you see the most amount of promise in? So, uh, we still focus on uh, the Army and the Navy. They are our biggest consumers when it comes to Paras Defense, apart from space. 
so even space organizations uh, is a big big uh, opportunity for us but when it comes to army and navy the indigenization although the percentages that you have said it uh, translates into the tier 2 and tier 1.5 systems are still being imported the tier 1 is indigenized now when we look at tier 2 and tier 1.5 is an opportunity for a company like paras who are in that space Well, hang on, gentlemen. Let's get some more perspective because it's not just the buyers, but also the sellers who are getting ready for this big opportunity. Defence public sector entities have over one billion dollars in capex lined up in the three years between FI21 and FI23, as per Ilara. Now, they estimate the opportunity to be over nine lakh crores in the next ten years, with field artillery and tanks around 1.6 lakh crores. You have helicopters, 1.3 lakh crores, combat aircraft, about one and a half lakh crores, and navy and vessel orders at about 2 lakh crore rupees so huge opportunity across all of these segments huge opportunity across these segments but you know what the kicker is that this mm. does not include a lot of the massive potential opportunities that we have in defense r&d we have drones the policy is yet to be announced we have ship repair as well as defense software space as well so those are big opportunities that we are eyeing apart from the ones which are already you know out there for everyone to know and that brings me to the question to mr patel itself mr patel has there been any capacity constraint in the industry because we hear uh, you know uh, you know news items about uh, there being shortages as far as the defense uh, requirements are concerned i must uh, say that uh, the few in the industry who really have taken that kind of a blind faith in future Uh, as to say just about lasting to grow uh, we put in about 8000 crores of capex in place and this has been done to that extent uh, expecting the markets to be doing what they seem to be doing now now this is essentially where it makes a huge difference so some of us in industry and uh, lasting to grow is not the only one some of us actually have put in those investments and more are coming by the day Uh, it's more of a case of uh, if there's an opportunity money will be found uh, all of us in the industry know that if there's a serious opportunity to, to be vis- becoming visible all of us will find money and invest is to some extent a chicken and egg syndrome we are really talking about what is real uh, will certainly get investments i don't think investment is a constraint all right uh, hang there gentlemen we'll just take a short break come back on the other side we focus on the key tailwinds as well as the headwinds for the indian defense market and we also focus on the bigger question and that is are india's defense